So yo, it's your boy Six and welcome back to another self-working card magic tutorial. All right, this brilliant self-working effect comes from the mind of Leonard Green. If you don't know who Leonard Green is, please go on YouTube and watch everything he's ever done because he is one of the greatest magicians of our time. This was published in a manuscript called The Green Northern Lights in 2008, a little lecture note pamphlet. I got to see him lecture in New Jersey, I think it was. Uh, absolutely incredible, nice to meet him as well. And uh, we're gonna be showing you easily one of my favorite self-working tricks. It really is that good. It's smart, it's clever, it's logical. Uh, it's one of those things where there's some dealing involved, but it's built into the presentation in such a unique way. I think you're gonna love it. So let's go ahead and get right in to today's performance. All right, let's take a look at the performance of this routine. Here's what's gonna happen. The spectators are gonna take the cards and shuffle them up. They get to mix them up as much as they like. You really let them shuffle them, you take them back, you can throw in more shuffles, whatever you wanna do, it's your life. I'm gonna write something down on this index card here. I don't want you all to see it. Uh -huh. I'm gonna leave that right here. That's gonna be my prediction. Now the spectators have shuffled the card and done all the work. I'm gonna take a look uh, and test my luck here. Now, I don't know about you, but some people say that 13 is an unlucky number. Do you think that's true? Well, we're gonna find out. So I'm gonna have the spectator remove 13 cards from this pack. So they go ahead, they take out 13 cards. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. They can take the 13 cards from anywhere. Let's just say they grab those 13 cards. Now I'm gonna have the spectator uh, shuffle these cards up. They're gonna have to shuffle them up and get in tune with these cards. So they mix them up, get a little feeling, a connection between themselves and the cards. And they gotta lay out three cards face down on a table just like this. So they took out any 13 cards, shuffled those up, and then ended up with any three cards. Now we're gonna to try to complete the circle of 13. What does that look like? Well, it looks a little something like this. Uh, if I turn this, this card face up, we're gonna complete 13. So that's a three, so we're gonna to have to add uh, 10 more cards, right? So this would be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 and 13. Uh, jacks will be 11, queens will be 12, kings will be 13, ace is one. Uh, this is very uh, standard stuff. I'm gonna flip this one face up, I got a five. So we're gonna complete 13, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. And you don't have to hold the cards, the spectators can actually do all the holding of the cards. Finally, we got one last card, ace. So we'll complete that as well. So that's, a, that's one, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Now what we just did there is we took an unlucky number 13 and we put it into the 13 ritual. And that ritual was completing 13 three times using a little bit of fate, a little randomness, if you will. Uh, the thing is, things are not always as they seem. You see, we got a five and a one is six plus three, is nine. All of these three random cards that you picked out equal nine. I'm gonna count down nine cards, okay? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and this is number nine. We ended up at a random card. Following the ritual of 13, you could have picked any three cards and we ended up at the eight of hearts. Crazy thing is, I wrote something down before we began, and what I wrote down is the eight of hearts. Check that out. A perfect match. Hey, if you're enjoying this content, be sure to hit that like button. It's really important because it helps feed the YouTube algorithm monster. Uh, so be sure to hit that like button. It really helps push the channel. And I thank you for your support. Let's get back to today's tutorial. All right, let's take a look at the performance of this. Uh, sorry, let's take a look at the explanation. We already saw the performance. Let's explain it. This is a wonderful routine. And the only uh, prerequisite, if you will, would be you have to have a full deck of cards. So 52 cards in a deck and you are good to go. So now we take the cards. It's a shuffled deck of cards as long as there is 52 cards in there. So I don't recommend this with a borrowed deck. A lot of borrowed decks would be missing a card or two. You could just double check to make sure there's 52 cards. So the cards get shuffled by the spectator and here's, here's what's gonna happen. 
Uh, this will be any piece of paper. You can place it away. I don't, just pretend I didn't write on it yet. Uh, the spectator is given the cards to shuffle. And when you take the cards back, I'm gonna grab the cards from the spectator. So imagine this is the spectator handing me the back the cards. I'm gonna grab them like this, thumb at the bottom, fingers at the front, and I'm gonna grab them back. And the reason why I do this is because it's gonna allow me to get a peek at the bottom most card. I can see the bottom card here is the eight of spades. And I don't need much, it's just a, little, a slight little tilt, like right now I can see it. So I grab the cards back from the spectator, take a glance at the bottom, and I get what's called a peek, and I can see the bottom card. And that's the card I'm gonna end up writing on my index card. Uh, if you're looking for another way to do it, another method is called the all around square up. So what you do is the cards are shuffled, let's say they place on the table, uh, you dribble them between your hands, right? Cause that makes them a little me messy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna square the cards up. So my fingers are gonna square the cards here. I'm gonna turn the deck over, squeezing and as I straighten the cards. And now I'm able to see this card right here. So from my angle looks something like that. It's a quick flash. Right, because the cards get mixed up and now I know it's the eight of spades at the bottom. All by just turning the deck of cards. That's the all around square up peak. Uh, so you have two versions there, taking it back from the spectator, looking at the bottom or doing the all around square up. I just need to know this bottom card, that's it. If you want to prearrange this and have a specific card at the bottom, you can do that as well. Uh, what you can do is let's say this is the card you want to force, place that inside the card box, have the spectators shuffle up the cards to do what they want. You say, look, we're gonna take the cards put them back inside the box, but you're gonna really place it back on top of that eight of spades, put the cards in the box, say, I don't wanna to touch them from here on out. I'm gonna write something down, go into writing it out, and then you can go back, take the cards out, and then start the routine, and that puts the eight of spades at the bottom. Just another way you can do it if you wanna force the card. Now I'm gonna write eight of spades. Um, since I've already used this card, I'm gonna cross this out, and I'm gonna write eight of spades here, eight, and I'll draw my little, Spade, probably the worst spade in the world. I'm not much of an artiste, but eight of spades, you get the idea. You can write it out as well. And that will be placed face down for the spectator, okay? That goes here, they can be placed in their pocket, it can be placed anywhere, but that's the bottom card. Now the spectators can pick up the cards. And remember, they don't know the bottom card. It's irrelevant to the routine. Nothing's even taken place yet. They haven't picked the cards. So there's no pressure. So they can look. They're not going to acknowledge it or notice it. Um, you can hand them the cards and say, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take out 13 cards from anywhere in the middle. I like to tell them in the middle because um, eventually the spectator could take out that bottommost card. Um, if that's the case, then you have to do a little bit of changing things around. There's a different routine you can do with that. I personally recommend just to make your life easy spread through and say, take 13 cards from somewhere in the middle. Don't worry, because if they do take that card, I'm gonna show you a, another routine at the end. So watch this entire video, that if they take this card, what to do. So they're gonna take out 13 cards. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Any 13 cards get taken out. This card, the eight of spades, is still at the bottom. Now the spectators take out all 13 cards. I'm just gonna double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, just because I made a mistake. Uh, so 13 cards, tell them to shuffle those cards up. They really do give them a mix. And then when they're done, you tell them to place any three cards face down on the table. You take these cards back from the spectator or if you want them to hold on to the cards the entire time, you can pick this up and just place it on top in their hand. So they're holding these cards. You say, here, take the rest of the deck and drop this on top. Really what has to happen is that these 10 cards need to get underneath the eight of spades. That's the that's part of the method here, right? So uh, these 10 cards that they picked are going here. And this is what makes this routine so smart. You take out 13, it's gonna play a role. They pick out any three and the other 10 cards end up at the bottom, setting up the trick for you. It makes your life easy. So now that the cards are set up, I'm just gonna refocus here. Your cards are set up, we're good to go. Now we're gonna follow that ritual. And you can explain to them, we count to 13. Jacks are 11, tens are tens, obviously. Jacks are 11, queens are 12, and kings are 13. So in this case, we don't have to deal any cards. We already got our lucky 13. Here, we got a seven. So we gotta count eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and the same thing here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Completing the circle of 13. Three 13s, ooh, I'm trying to get as lucky as I can. Now we're gonna add these up so I know three and seven is 10, 
plus 13 is 23, and I'm gonna count down 23 cards. One, or again, the spectator could be doing all of this. You don't have to be holding the cards. They can have it in their hands. Count down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And it's gonna be the eight of spades. You can go here, show the prediction says the eight of spades and they will freak out. This is a wonderful routine because it is super simple and it utilizes uh, just basic math, right? The, the trick works itself. It's a self-working trick. All you have to do is know the bottom card ahead of time, follow the procedure I just gave you, and the rest of the routine will work itself out. You can even go as far to show that they could have picked any one of these. It could have been another 13, it could have been a two. Uh, they would have changed the outcome depending on which of those three cards they pulled out. Uh, so it would have been a different number no matter what. And it really is a different number. So that's the crazy part. I mean, no matter what card they pick, it still works itself out as long as you follow that procedure. Now I did say, uh, what happens if the spectator happens to take the bottom card? So let's go ahead and take a look at what to do in that instance. All right, so what do we do if they take the bottom card? Well, the first thing is you're gonna spread the cards and tell them to take out 13 cards. So normally, here's what's gonna happen. They're gonna take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And for whatever reason, um, spectators will always go in order. 11, 12, and obviously they're gonna take the last card, it has to be the last card, 13. For some reason, spectators will always go left to right. They'll kind of keep it in sequence. They won't take some from here, here, and here. Even if they do, just pay attention to where that bottom card is, that, that eight of spades, and follow it. Let's just say they took out the cards and we end up here. Now we can get rid of these cards. And now you gotta change the trick, right? It's a different trick. And the cool thing is that you could make this a trick in and of itself. Uh, so now we have the eight of spades here. What you wanna do is you wanna pick up these cards and you wanna get that eight of spades to the bottom. So you say, look, we're gonna pick up the cards just like this. You picked out any 13 cards. So just make sure that eight of spades gets to the bottom. If they pull it out at another point, just make sure you pay attention to where it is, pick up the cards, say, okay, you picked any random 13 cards, square them up, making sure that eight of spades at the bottom. It's only 13 cards. It's not too much to follow along with. So now that we got the eight of spades on the bottom and the cards can be in the hand, we're gonna change the routine. Here's what happens. You say, well, I told you the number 13 was a lucky number. Let's try to prove this. And here's what you're gonna do. I want you to take one card, right? The first card and I want you to place it under. Take the next three, place it down on the table. That's our 13. Again, take one card, that's our one, place it under, take the next three, place it on the table, take one under, three on the table, one under, three on the table, and that leaves you with one card. Please turn that card over. It's the eight of spades, look at what I wrote. We also got the eight of spades. What you're doing is a version of the down under deal and what makes it work is you're still using a ritual, you're still using the presentation of 13 being lucky, and you're just getting into it in a different way. So that card at the bottom, once again, you take one card to the bottom, take the next three, put them on the table. One to the bottom, next three to the table, one to the bottom, next three to the table, one under, three to the bottom table, and then you end up with the eight of spades. All you have to do is follow that same ritual, again, using 13. So what's so good is that even the presentation built into this makes it a really good trick. And you know, if they thought they were trying to be sneaky by taking the bottom card uh, and you pull this out, it's really gonna fry them. I, I think they're both really wonderful routines. So uh, no matter what happens, you always have a good routine with the lucky 13, uh, a ritual, to, to perform in two different ways. And uh, there you have it, uh, an incredible routine. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, folks, and I will see you all in the next episode.